guys hello it's been a minute since we've been on live so i'm waiting for jamila to come join me <laughs> and today's topic is about is your heart closed because of past betrayal now if you're a woman and you've ever been betrayed in the past you probably find it difficult to trust people you find it difficult to trust your intuition you find it difficult to receive love um, because you don't want to be burnt again. So me and Jamila will be unpacking this topic. If you have any questions, please click the question mark at the bottom of this live and ask away. So yeah, let's wait for Jamila. <laughs> Salaam alaikum everyone. Thank you for joining. <laughs> Salaam alaikum Jamila. How you doing, girl? How you doing? I'm, I'm doing good. Recovering, doing good. Okay, so we want to do this topic, right? This this topic about feminine energy and how it closes when we get, you know, betrayed or when we've been through a past hurt. So, um, what? So I think what we should talk about is feminine energy because I think that like, some people still don't know what it is. So, what is like the feminine energy? Okay, so I think the first thing for everyone to understand is that all of us, all humans, all females, all males have feminine energy in them. You have masculine yeah. energy, you have feminine energy. And both need to have a certain element of balance on what you're doing in certain tasks for you to really feel like you're mastering that task really well. And the feminine is all about being, about receiving about being in flow and feeling. And what we've seen already with the women that we've worked with is that when someone's had a trauma in their past, when they've got resentment, anger, difficulty in processing things from their past, their hearts energetically close. And that's what makes you less receptive to your feminine energy and less tapped into your feminine energy. Oh, I like that. Yes. So your feminine en encompasses your intuition and the way you trust yourself, right? Um, so like a perfect example for me is I know I had the sister wound. So in the past, I had been burned by friends. I had like, you know, been betrayed by so many women. And I really got into my masculine. So, you know, if you did, you ever grow up like telling yourself that, oh, I don't gel with girls. I hang out with boys more. Like I was a tomboy growing up. So I used to always hang out with the boys. I had like boy best friends. So I used to tell myself that I just don't get on with females. Like, that's not my thing. Like, girls don't like me. I like, not that I don't like girls. I don't, don't like hanging out with them, but I just feel like, felt like they didn't like me. But what I realized was that that was a deep wound within me because I was so afraid of being betrayed again, or I was afraid of being um, judged. Or I used to find that a lot of women that I used to hang out with used to feel um, jealous of me. But then when I dug a bit deeper, I realized it's because I'm not owning my power and I'm not honoring myself and I don't have healthy boundaries. So once I started shifting that perspective and I started healing those in, um, emotional wounds and I started healing my feminine energy, that's when I started opening up the doors back to my intuition, like hanging out with, you know, females, like having lots of, like being around a lot of females and not just about having female friends, is also about being able to hang out with like women, right? Because we're Muslims, like we can't hang out with men anyway. So if it's, if it's your mahram, then that's cool. But just being able to gel, like and being confident, and not worry about oh, is she like judging me? Is she jealous of me? Is she gonna envy me? Is she gossiping about me? Not worrying about that kind of stuff. That's emancipation. That's freedom. Mm, I love I love what you're mentioning about the sister wound and ladies. The, the sister wound is collective. Like, even if you feel like you have good relationships with your real sisters, biological sisters, or your Muslim sisters, or just women in general, there is still a collective sister wound that so many women are holding from the past, from our, from our ancestors, from the collective feminine wound that needs healing, from, like, oppression in the past of women, on the things that women done to other women or like how you mentioned like gossiping things like that that everyone's still carrying within them that needs healing um and like like how you mentioned Rosaline I also had this feeling I remember growing up where there wasn't many women or girls that I felt like I could truly bond and connect with because I always mm -hmm. felt like I was the weird one I had different interests I wasn't interested in what they were interested in 
I was sort of like the outsider, the, the, the different one. And for, it took me a long time to really embrace that part of me rather than see it as a part of me that's broken or weird or something that I just need to kind of like accept to something that I can actually celebrate and embrace and that makes me unique to who I am today. Mm, I love that. I have to listen. And alhamdulillah, like me collaborating, like collab- us collaborating together, I feel like it's helped me further heal that sister wound because I never would have thought that I would have been able to collaborate with another female. Like that, that never crossed my mind ever. I, didn't, I used to be that solopreneur and I used to want to do everything by myself. But now I've now that I've healed that sister wound, I'm, I'm opening myself up to more collaborations with women, like with powerful women, women who, are, who I see as better than me, women who inspire me. I'm just like, yo, I need to reach out to these women because if I don't start this, if, if we don't start this trend now, it's never going to start. Like, you know, where we talk about, oh no, female empowerment. Right, there's so, there's so much female empowerment out there, but I feel like a lot of the female empowerment is just with the women in their circle. That's not empowerment. Empowerment is where you go out of your comfort zone and you you look at someone saying, yo, she's like top level. She's doing it. I'm so inspired by her. Let me just reach out to her. Right, let me collaborate mm-hmm. with her. Like she's not better than me, but it means that we can do something together. There's no competition. It's all about collaboration. And I feel like that's not, that's not talked about enough in the, in the women, women's entrepreneur. Um, empowerment movement is not talked about enough about how we can collaborate as people without competition because what naturally happens with women is there's jealousy now you can have jealousy but to the point not to the point where you want that goodness to be taken away from them so sometimes when I see a sister doing well I'm like I'm next and that jealousy yeah. within me inspires me to go forward it doesn't I don't look at them from a place of oh look at her she's doing better than me you know let me just like you know, have that kind of envy. It's like, wow, she's doing it. I can so definitely do it, right? And that's like, that's what happens when you heal your feminine energy. Because with your masculine, what will happen is when you see a woman who is doing well, you will quickly say to yourself, I need to, I need to be better than her. I need to compete yeah. with her. Let me not big her up. Let me not go comment on her post. Let me, let me pretend I don't see her. Let me just pretend she's not in my vision, but let me just carry on stalking her and compete with her in my mind. That's what happens when you're in your masculine. Yeah. And when you put that masculine hat on, guys, that Rosalie mentioned about competing, you're, you're taking yourself out of the same pie of abundance that that other person is in. And rather than sharing abundance with that person and like knowing and recognizing that that's also available for you, like Rosalie mentioned, you're taking it away from you. So you might be thinking that me competing in my mind with that person, trying to do better than them, um, in an unhealthy way is actually going to give you more. It's actually taking away from you. And one thing I always do, especially if you're Muslim, you'll relate to this. Is that when I see a woman in the space that's doing really, really well, maybe she's showing up in, an, in a really confident, powerful way. Maybe she's making the money that I would love to make. Maybe she's got things that I'd love to have. I, I just say, Allahumma zid for zid. Like, oh, I'll give her more. Because yeah. the, angels, the angels reply back to that dua saying, I mean, and you too. And obviously the angels do us accept it. And when you, when you have that vibration of you, that person that you want the same thing from, that you're, you're wanting them to have even more, you're already putting yourself in that state of abundance. So oh, I love that. Sp- oh, I love that. You know, guys, yeah. Like, we know the hadith about the angels. Like, we, when we make dua, the angels say, and you too. So just imagine, like, as a woman, and this is like, only particularly for women, I see it a lot, is imagine that you see someone and you're like, wow. From, from a place of, from your heart, from a clean place, you, you ask Allah to give them more. Like, I think that's so beautiful. I feel that's, that's empowerment. That's true empowerment. Mm-hmm. But you don't have any kind of feeling towards that person other than, I want the best for you. And I feel that will heal the collective on such like a mass level. But because we're stuck in these wounds of like our past, our ancestral past, um, the traumas that we've experienced, we close ourselves off. So, so what's the symptoms then, Jamila? Like, give me some symptoms of, you know, when you have a closed feminine energy, how would you know? Um, before I talk about those symptoms, I just wanted to mention as well with what you said, um, that when you're rooting for someone else, like I've had messages from sisters that feel sad that nobody's rooting for them. But when you, how can you expect people to root for you, to comment on your posts, to support you when you're not doing that for anyone else? Like you will get back what, you, what you're doing for other women. So the more exactly. you're supporting women, the more you're celebrating their wins, the more you're 
so happy for their abundance, for their clients, for their wins, for whatever life, um, amazing life situation that they're in, the more those things can come back to you. And so you need to, you need to be doing that for other women too. Um, and some symptoms for a closed heart is feeling a lot of anxiety or uh, chest pain in your heart area, because this is like a, a strong, powerful, energetic container. Um, there's even recent studies now that actually measure your your brainwave and your heartbeat are synced. That mm. they can sense when you're, you're, there's an energy around your heart that's actually in pain, the, the parts of your brain actually light up, the, the pain parts of your brain. Wow. And that's, that's very, very powerful because it's actually got a, a electromagnetic circuit around it that, that's unique just for the heart. And one symptom that you know you have a closed heart is that you can feel that sense of contraction that sense of collapsing, anxiety, heaviness, closeness in your heart. When a difficult situation comes up to you, maybe somebody says something that triggers you or hurts you or is a bit shocking to you, you suddenly feel the walls come up. You suddenly feel um, like the iron gates come up and you feel like you need to put the armor on. That's mm. huge symptoms of a closed heart or feeling like you can never have emotional intimacy with anyone with friends, with your partner, with even yourself. Like you don't know how to process your feelings. You don't even know how to feel. You don't even know how to verbalize your feelings and allow them to flow through you. Oh, I love that. And uh, something that came up for me was like, I remember back in school, like in school, I used to always hang out with girls who are older than me. And I went through work experience. Uh, I don't know if you did that in, in, in London, but up north, we had work experience at the age of 15. So we went to like work in a, in an actual shop. And, um, I remember I made friends with the with the girls that they were like 18 I was like 15 I think they were 19 and I remember um the bullies in school they like they created this whole drama because of the fact that I was hanging out with these older girls they were like jealous and then they made those older girls turn against me and I remember every single time someone asked me what happened I would flip I would just be like, oh my God, like, are you saying I'm a liar? Like, they're not saying anything to me, but in my head, I'm getting so defensive, right? I'm like, oh, what, what are you trying to say? Like, you know, I'm a liar and you believe them. And it's just like, wow, I just realized now that's what happens when you're betrayed or someone breaks your trust. The first thing you do is go into the defensive mode. Whenever someone asks you about something that's very painful to you. So it could be like uh, maybe your ex-partner, an ex-friend, maybe an ex-in-law, whatever it is. Someone just basically asks you a question from a place of love, but because you haven't healed that wound within, you're just going to def like all guns blazing. You're just going to defense more because you're trying to protect your heart. That's a, that's a big sign um, that your feminine energy is closed. And when you're like that, it's very hard for you to receive love. So maybe like someone compliments you and you're like, ah, nah, you know, when someone says, oh, your naqab is nice. Oh, is it really? Oh, you know, this old thing. Look at it. It's so old. You know, it's got, it's got so many stains on it. You pick out, you make the person notice the bad about you that's another sign that your feminine energy is closed mm, i love that one the one that you mentioned right now about receiving because receiving yeah. is such a powerful powerful feminine um energy tool and so many women are oblivious to the fact that they don't know how to receive so even if somebody helps them somebody does something for them they find it very hard to receive they kind of feel like oh she picked up my kids today that means i need to pick up her kids tomorrow <laughs> of uh she cooked for me i need to cook for her tomorrow when am i gonna find time to do something back for her she gave me this for her gift i need to make sure i give her a gift back oh my god that's so true <laughs> sorry i just have like a massive moment oh my god have you ever been through that i have been through that so much especially with the mom girl it's like oh my days when someone does something good for you like oh my god so how how and you know what happens is because you're so because you don't want to repay them back you just say no to them right so let's say mm -hmm. someone says i'll come pick up your kids but in your mind you're like oh no but i'm gonna have to repay them back so then you say nah it's okay it's cool i'll pick them up myself then you carry all this big burden and then you say to yourself no one helps me no one's there for me why because you just cut every single person who's trying to help you yeah and you find it hard to receive like receiving is receiving without any expectations without any intention really of giving anything back unless you genuinely feel like giving unless you genuinely out your masculine energy at another time feel like giving to a person when you when a woman is in her complete receptive mode she can receive people's help without thinking of how am i going to give them something back how can i repay the favor when a woman's in her complete feminine there's no such thing as repaying a favor but more of when she's 
again, more in her feminine. She just genuinely feels like doing something back for the person at any time. It doesn't have to be that because she picked up my kids this week, I have to pick them up on Friday, you know, something like that. Yeah. Like, we go through this whole rigmarole. I used to do this back in the day. Like, someone gave me a favour. In my mind, I'm mapping out how I'm going to help them back. It's so funny. You know that meme of the guy doing the maths equation? That's basically what would happen to me when someone... someone when someone said let me help you especially even if my own family right even my own siblings when they said to me you know I'll help you in my mind I'm telling myself yeah but if they help me then I'm going to have to go and help them and then I'm indebted to them so if I can't give them return the same favor back I'm going to be forever in debt with that person and that comes from that that closeness and it's a childhood trauma there was a lot maybe you were neglected emotionally as a child so what happened is if you were raised in a home where you're, you weren't seen or heard. And the only way you were seen and heard is if you did something good for your parent. So let's say you were only praised when you got good grades or you were only praised when you did the chores like to the perfect standard, only then you were praised. So you were rarely praised and um, only in circumstances where you were acting like an adult. That's the only time you were praised. So if you've been through that as a child, you find it very difficult to receive. Uh, the only way you receive if the only way you feel comfortable receiving is when you have over people pleased, where you've overly pleased someone and then you're like, okay, let me just receive a little bit back. So let's say you've gone out your way for that person. You've done everything for them and then they give you something back. You're like, okay, that's fine. So you have to make, in your mind, you're constantly telling yourself, I have to make the first move. I have to be the one that gives first before I ever receive. And that blocks you. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely a sign of um, somebody finding it very hard to receive. Yeah, so uh, guys, ask me your question. Someone asked a question just before. I think it was SMD Nigeria. She mentioned about negativity. So how do you deal with the negativity um, the bigger you grow? Um, I would say to you, um, if you don't have any hate, then you're not growing fast enough, number one. Uh, number two, if there's no negativity in your life, um, ask yourself, where in myself do I feel negative? Because our environment is a reflection of how we feel inside. So I would, I would advise you to look deeply within and ask yourself, where am I expecting support? Where am I expecting certain results? And if you're expecting um, people to support you, or just like Jamila said, that sometimes we just expect it without giving it. So try and give it first. Like if you're online, try and, this is what I always do. This is my formula. I always give before I receive. So if I'm online and I'm doing this work, I will always give something before I receive, not because it's from a place of people pleasing, but because I know the online space is completely different to when you're with your family and your friends. The online space is that way, that when you give and you serve from a place of love, more abundance comes to you. So I, was, I would ask you to look, to look at those two things. What about you, Jamila? What's your advice? Well, I, I would just add in, apply the focus on the negativity. Take your yeah. focus a bit. Focus on the rest of the your business that's doing amazingly well and allow the negativity to just disappear by itself. Exactly. The more you focus on it, the more it grows, the more energy you give it, the more energy you give in those trolls or whoever the people are that are inflicting negativity in your business. If you're focusing on the amazing other followers and um, amazing people that are supporting you, that's what you're going to grow. Exactly. That's so true. Absolutely. Someone asked, um, Yasmin asked, how do you work on those feminine wounds, any books? Mm, okay, one book I would really recommend. It's a very difficult read to really comprehend and understand, but I would recommend The Untethered Soul. It's an amazing, mm. amazing book in learning how to open your heart. Um, if you've had any trauma or any heavy, heavy closure in your heart, I would strongly, strongly recommend that you work with someone as you read the book because. Otherwise, it's just going to be all knowledge and very difficult to implement. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Work with someone who knows how to unblock that feminine energy um, is very important. Um, a book that I would recommend is She Comes First. I think it's by Brian Knox. I can't remember. Um, it's a really good book about setting healthy boundaries and about embodying your femininity. It's written by a guy, but the book really shifted my mindset when it came to like, being okay with um, saying no. I think a lot of us find it difficult to say no. And we, um, 
we say yes even when we feel like we want to say no that's a big that's another symptom where you're constantly saying yes to everything because you're mm-hmm. afraid to make someone um and not by ian kerner let me find i'll find the book um but when you're constantly saying yes to people and you're constantly because you're tr- you don't want to disappoint them that's another sign that you are your feminine energy is wounded like for example let's say you're at work and then your boss says to you can you work overtime but you know on the weekend you schedule date night but then because you don't want to displease your boss you're like okay and then what happens you cause an argument with your husband because you decided to put your boss over your husband because you were afraid to say no that's like the perfect sign of like your feminine energy is wounded um it's not about ian kerner I want to add in as well that um if you have a very closed heart right now and you could tell because everyone can tune into the energy of their heart any moment um if you're feeling numbness there if you're feeling tightness heaviness sadness sadness is a huge one that there's that your heart is closed or even grief um if you try to open your heart by yourself um and I've experienced this myself sometimes it can backfire so you might do the energy work to open it you might be doing practicing feminine feminine energy tools to open it but you're only doing it at a surface level and there's going to be like a masculine um energy behind it because you're doing it for a purpose you can get thinking that oh this is going to open my heart this is going to this is going to cure me this is going to make me better and really what you're you're adding that heaviness more into it if that makes sense because you're yeah, wanting so- you're forcing it to happen um and when you're forcing it it's almost like um um like if you imagine a, t- a toddler with a tantrum and you're forcing them to be quiet what ends up happening is they obviously have a bigger tantrum so when you're forcing your heart open it's just going to close more so that's why i really really recommend you do you work with a therapist you work with somebody that's going <coughs> to that's experienced in this to really help you through yes do you guys have any any more questions um i think i saw a question before told her for so a question on my mind playing tricks on me um no there was no other question yes yeah, so opening your heart and having nobody there to help is dangerous that's so true because you could go like into a ton of trauma and then you stay stuck there right yeah. okay so guys okay you're talking about therapists me and jamila we have thrive opening up soon we've had so many women enroll and this is what we work on in thrive in a 12 week container so it's something that i do with abundance rewiring where i help you unblock your feminine energy and the ladies who did the last um the last round um they mentioned feeling so much karma they mentioned feeling so much in flow they mentioned feeling so loving and actually one lady mentioned that her daughter came to her and touched her stomach um and it was just like a it was like a really beautiful moment that she had with the daughter she reconnected with her little girl so this is what we work on in thrive this is exactly what you get you get abundance rewiring and you get 12 weeks of live hot seat coaching so shall we talk more about thrive jamila yeah let's go for it okay so <laughs> thrive ah, i'm so excited to be opening it okay girl so this is what's going to happen in thrive is a 12 week container where we um is live hot seat coaching so if you guys have ever watched tony robbins now if you watch if you ever been to tony robbins events um he does like this this moment with like clients less of the experiencing depression so he goes to the audience and he literally helps someone overcome depression anxiety suicidal thoughts in a literally 10 minute 20 minute session that's the power of live hot seat coaching so what happens in thrive is you submit your question and we coach you on that day live right and the most beautiful thing about it is that you could be asking a question that other women are also experiencing so everyone it's like everyone heals collectively it's like a collective healing process i can't explain to you how amazing it is but every single woman that went through thrive they had amazing breakthroughs yeah guys and if you if you were watching this live and you were feeling like your heart is closed over something that's happened in the past maybe something that's happened this year in 2020 because it's been a roller coaster year and maybe you've lost a job maybe you've lost loved ones maybe you've lost your partner maybe you go through huge life transitions or reconnecting with your family members thrive is the place that's going to really really help you heal that on a deep 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 level we had women um heal their relationships with family members we had women heal and forgive uh, family members that had passed away that they were feeling so much anger and resentment over 
and they all experienced a shift and opening in their heart at such a deep deep level like some of the women they said they've never felt this before and this is an experience that every single woman can have and should have right and exactly build a sisterhood that's another thing i love about thrive is that we actually built a sisterhood where there's no judgment there is no fear there is no like you know competition everyone is on their own journey and everyone is honoring that journey um there's no like oh my god i need to gel with all the women there's no fear you know like when you go into group programs and sometimes you feel lost and you feel like you don't belong there none of the women felt that way they were like i felt like this was this was my time to shine this was my time to heal and they felt supported by me and jamila and they felt supported by everyone around them um so it's a group it's a group setting so you would get 10 minutes like 10 20 minutes on the call with me and Jamila with me or Jamila but that is it is in a group setting so you get access to a private facebook group um where there's other women in it and you ask questions and we guide you there's another question where the time structure um so the time structure is we're looking at the weekdays right yeah we're looking at week weekday afternoons uh, gmt for now but we're also going to look at where all these women are based what's the best suitable timing for everyone and we're even open to changing timings um week by week so that everyone yeah. can come to a call inshallah inshallah yeah professor um uh, fresca i'm more than happy to send you a link with a pdf and it has all the information on it so uh, watch out for a dm from me after this live and i'll send you that link but yeah guys this is thrive and it's been amazing like the last round was so amazing even i was shocked that so many women had so many breakthroughs that like, i remember um a, a lady said that she only came for anxiety <laughs> she came for anxiety or anxiety over raising her prices and she left with with two businesses she has two businesses now two two streams of income but she only came for one specific little, little area in her business about raising her prices and now she's like she she doubled her um her return of investment and she has a business and she's taking care of herself and her family it was just it's just really phenomenal to see these women like thrive um yeah, powerful powerful breakthroughs oh okay so sophia's question i'm so glad that you mentioned this that your sister um, went to therapy but she feels hard to open up okay there was actually a few women who were so scared to open up in thrive and i don't i think they slowly started opening up throughout the whole the whole 12 week program and they got massive massive breakthroughs um mm-hmm. cuz i was like i'll be honest i was afraid that okay maybe the what they don't get like the breakthroughs and i was like worried that this is this is like a coach thing every coach goes through this where they're worried that the person won't get results but they were slowly opening up in those four weeks and like towards the end they were like they were open about their feelings they were open about what happened to them about their childhood traumas about what they experienced and uh, one of the ladies was able to do um like a gig where she spoke publicly for the first time and mm-hmm. she felt amazing so if you feel like oh i'm too scared to open up just remember that this is a safe space you will feel safe to express like your deepest most intimate secrets and you have our word that we will never spread it anywhere without your permission Yeah and guys you only need to go as deep as it feels comfortable for you like there was exactly. a woman that healed from such deep deep trauma from her past without ever verbalizing what the trauma was like she never actually said specifically what the trauma was but she was still able to have powerful powerful breakthroughs so you don't we don't have to know your whole life history to be able to, for you to be able to heal and grow through thrive another amazing thing was these ladies they created another facebook profile which they only use for thrive and they use a pseudonym so they didn't even use their real names and we are absolutely cool with that what we are more focused on is you getting healing because there's so much information out there there's so much misinformation as well and sometimes you could be doing the wrong things that are actually causing more harm than good and this will happen to me as well like when i was on my healing journey i was reading everything and watching everything and everything was confusing me like where do i go do i start here do i start there do i start this way and me and jamila we've had our fair share of experiences in life i've had my experiences um i've been through certain traumas i know what it's like to grow up in a certain culture a certain environment so I we both know energetically if someone's not feeling if if someone's feeling off we're like okay this might be going a bit too deep and we give that person that space so this is all about your learning about your healing and one thing I I love is that when you're able to speak about what happened to you but not cry anymore I think that's so beautiful and every yeah. single lady she was able to speak about her trauma or speak about the past 
without crying over it. Yeah, not being affected by it. Not feeling the old emotions of sadness or anxiety or of failure or unworthiness. Um, mm. Because by the time we finished Thrive, they were able to heal through those, those issues. Yes, and another great thing, guys, is that if you're in the UK or the US, you can apply for PayPal credit. And PayPal credit is a is a, is an interest free loan for six months. So you can um, pay for the program, and then you are able to pay back that loan to PayPal over four months. I think it is, and is very affordable. So if you have any, if you want to know more about Thrive, send me or Jamila a DM, and we will send you the PDF with all the information about Thrive. Yep, guys, so, yeah, guys, feel free to DM us, inshallah. Um, I will answer any of your questions as well if you've got any more questions on Thrive. See if there's anything oh, else. Let me just get Mohammed. So, yeah, guys. Oh, my God, I'm so excited to start. Oh, someone mentioned that they're in Chicago. That's fine. There's quite a few females, few few ladies that have joined from America. I don't know where exactly but they are in America. So that's why we factored in afternoon sessions during the weekday. Uh, yes, yasmin.s. Let us know, um, just DM us, inshallah, and we'll give you details of Thrive where you can heal through all of these things that we talked about. Definitely. Okay, so what's our final thoughts about healing the feminine energy? Final thoughts. Um, healing your feminine energy is, is a process and you can start that process by just consciously even feel, looking at what you're feeling day to day, moment to moment, seeing where am I pushing this feeling away or where am I allowing it to be? Yeah, Masha, I love that. And Yasmin, you already signed up. Woohoo! Okay, I love it. Um, um, and oh, my, my, my final thoughts. Yes, yes I'm so excited. Can't wait. Um, my final thoughts on feminine energy is. Look at your triggers. So if you're getting annoyed by negativity or you're focusing on negativity or you're getting, you're getting sucked into gossiping and envying and you know, jealousy, that is a wound within. And like, reach out for help. Maybe speak to someone about it. Maybe speak to someone that you see online that is, looks qualified in what they do and have a chat about it. Because the moment, is, it's all about awareness. Becoming aware of your triggers is when you heal. And yeah, guys, if you have any, any question about Thrive, send me or Jamila a DM and we will send you more information. And we'll be back, inshallah. When will we be back, Jamila? Um, hope maybe tomorrow, depending on how I'm feeling. Keep me in your doors, everyone. I'm still recovering, inshallah. Inshallah. So yeah, guys, we will see you soon. Take care. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah. Wa alaikum salam.